Some decks you build because there's a powerful core of Signy and main deck cards you want to use, and some decks you build because you're trying to explore a specific Larig. With the Niji Sanji set coming out recently, I was all excited to try revamping my black-white VTubers list from when Wacross first released, but Niji Sanji, the VTuber agency, is a bit of a dumpster fire right now, so I haven't had much motivation for that. However, there was a Larig from much earlier in the game that I always wanted to try maximizing the power of, and that is Musica Vogue EX. This is a relatively unique Larig in that it lets you reuse one of your level 2 assist Larigs. Its once per game ability allows you to pay 1 to return one of your level 2 assist Larigs back to the main deck, so you can grow it again and get its effect twice in the same game. Now this sounds great, but it does come with a pretty notable catch. The assist can only have main phase timing, and its grow cost can't be zero, which rules out all level 1 assist rigs. There is actually a few solid main phase assist options out there, such as X or Ang if you wanted to be more aggressive, but since attack phase assists are some of the strongest defensive options in the game and we're giving up one of ours, I went ahead and used Pure Luke Peeping for this deck. Well, Peeping isn't as strong as Umer Clear. Unfortunately, Umer also has attack phase timing, so we can't use it here. Even though Pierluk is more expensive, by using it with Musica, we're able to use her to freeze the opposing Larig over two turns, which is useful in any matchup and especially good against any Larigs that depend on attacking to use their abilities, such as Tama or Tama Go. Pure Luke also helps you get in with damage against the opponent with your own Larig attacks by looking at the opponent's hand and discarding any one card of your choice, which, unlike most other discard effects, can actually hit servants. While I really like Pure Luke as your main phase assist option, it was a little harder choosing the second assist. That is, until Carnival's assists were released, she is actually perfect for the slot, and after playing around with her a little bit, I can't imagine using a different Larig here. Musica EX gives you a different effect when you grow an assist during your main phase or during the opponent's attack phase, and Carnival has really good modes at both. Carnival can add a ton of extra offensive power by distributing Assassin as the situation demands, but if needed, she also is perfectly fine playing defense during the opponent's turn to lock out two lanes from attacking. She gives you a ton of versatility in the late game and has quickly become probably my favorite part of the deck. She gives you a ton of different lines of play to try and close out the game. While the, the rigs here are all pretty locked in and weren't too controversial, I'm not quite as convinced by my choice of pieces. At the moment, I am using Death Beam Diva, which in this build lets you draw three cards and burns three of your opponents enter. Drawing three cards in this deck is really, really nice, given that it tends to burn through your cards relatively quickly, and this gives you a lot more late game juice. Zeno Cluster has also been seeing a lot less play because it's not particularly effective against one of the stronger decks in the format, that is Mono White. So decks tend to be much more vulnerable to Enter Burn, which is why I like the combination of effects offered by Deathbeam Diva. Especially given the amount of removal in the main deck and Carnival Sin setting up an attack for the win, Burning the opponent's enter to stop them from drawing their assists is a great way to close out games and cutting off your opponent's outs to interact with your attack. The final piece in this deck for now is Take Off Wicross Robo. Apart from the fun name, coins actually help this deck out a fair bit. Specifically, using them for early removal, like Matahari or Rill, as well as using them to pay for your life bursts, can actually save you a fair bit of enter. Growing Pure Luke twice, as well as fully utilizing Carnival Sin, are both extremely expensive resourcing, and we're not in colors that have much access to enter charging. Leading on coins takes a fair bit of pressure off of our enter reach resources, which for now is a good enough effect that I'm sticking with it. In this deck, the effects usually end up averaging out to you this card essentially giving you two and a half free enter back. So now that we have a really sweet Larig deck, how can we complement this with our main deck? 
I tried a few different versions out, but I settled on using a proactive, aggressive strategy that was very enter efficient and also helped harass the opponent's enter zone. An interesting quirk of this strategy is that the main deck plays almost like a mono red deck. It uses early cheap removal like Matahari and Rill at level 1, as well as Kikunojo at level 2, to clear vulnerable low level Signy while enter burning the opponent with Nob and Otsuna. At level 3, things get a little more spicy, turning up the heat on Enderburn with Andromeda, as well as being able to use a toolbox of powerful Black Signy that you can pull from the trash as needed with Musica's effect. In this toolbox, you have more Ender Denial with Musica Memoria, you've got Ender Free Vanishing with Mew, and you have an Ender Denying Board Wipe in Erish Kegel. Erish Kegel can set up some truly absurd turns, especially when paired with Enderburn and Carnival Sin, but it's also pretty useless in a lot of other situations. Rounding out your level 3 lineup, you've got some somewhat odd inclusions like a VTuber card and Anna Mirage. Neither of these are particularly exciting, but they're nice to have access to, and they help round out the deck's life burst count. Between all of this, the deck has a solid blend of Ender Denial and Removal, but one thing that may be somewhat less obvious is that it has a ton of powerful removal effects in its life bursts. Erish Kegel, Andromeda, and the random VTuber all are able to clear out 10 caves, and there are 5 other effects that clear out 12 caves. Recovery and Yuzuki Memoria round out the life bursts with even more removal. This not only helps you save damage, but it gives the deck a bunch of extra counterattack power. Overall, that is the deck. It aims to keep you alive just long enough to use its powerful Life Bursts and Larig Freezing, while steadily dealing damage from turn 1 until you win. One of the interesting decisions to make when playing this deck is how much to enter charge. If you're against a deck like Mono White that isn't giving you a whole lot of enter over the course of the game to play with between bounce-based removal and tax effects, you want to be enter charging fairly normally. But against decks that are primarily focused on vanish-based removal, you actually can get away with not enter charging at all over the game. There have been plenty of test games I've run where I haven't enter charged at all, and still had plenty of enter to run out all of my effects. This deck is able to play either side fairly well. Overall, the deck is mostly aggressive, although it can do a decent impression of a mid-range deck when needed, between freezing the opponent's Larig, deploying reasonably high-powered Signy onto the board, and having Carnival Sin as a backup option to block a big attack. It will still struggle against the top decks of the meta, but it does put up a solid fight, and it feels like it's very much at the top tier of the Tier 2 range, possibly even very low tier 1. Either way, it does something that's fairly unique, and it has a ton of fun lines to try and figure out when you're beating your opponent's face in. Best of luck with your own brewing, and have a fantastic day.